What's up, fellow Shadow Priests? This is Alex here. We're talking about how to effectively use mind control in Arena. I think this is the most interesting Shadow Priest spell or Priest spell in general. There's a lot of outplay potential, really requires a lot of uh, foresight and anticipating when an enemy is going to use a cooldown. You can get really lucky and outplay your opponents by having good use of mind control. So against this team, we've just forced um, Bubble, Karma, and Hand of Sacrifice, so they have no cooldowns. And this monk is going to take absolutely zero damage with Hand of Sack up. That's 100% uh, damage is just going to transfer to the pally. So what I'm going to do here, <clears throat> while he's bursting my Shaman, I'm going to have a really effective mind control here. This is going to not only prevent the monk from getting healed, he's already low HP, but he's also leg swapped my shaman, as I said, so he's going to be bursting him here. I'm going to completely cancel his 45 second burst window and make him do absolutely nothing and make the pally do absolutely nothing. So in this situation, we'll just see what um, what goes down. The pally is going to come out and press his divine favor. It's a 30 second cooldown. That's his biggest heal. 100% gets him to full HP if that shit goes off. It's a really big heal. Pallies are crazy if you don't know this yet. And during this mind control, I'm just going to slowly drag this guy off the pillar. We don't really want him to be behind the pillar with the pally, so I just move him out there, and it causes the pally to be out in the open right now. And then when the monk ports back, we can try to reconnect on him and hopefully mess up their positioning again. So now we got the monk back in the open. He's got no port. I'm able to do damage, and the game will continue on from there because the monk is still low HP. We should be able to get some pressure. I'll mind control him again on his burst. This is his Fist of Fury. It gets canceled with all of his images, and the images actually started hitting him. He, like, he has monk debuffs. I don't know if you saw that, but this dude literally was getting railed by his own pets, which is super funny. And let's just let's rewind. Let's get a recap on that. Like, Look at his debuff right here. He's got a, a, some kind of bullshit going on. He's getting punched by those guys. Because he's mind controlled, the pally can't heal him still, and then we're also going to land more CC on him out of the uh, VT Dispel. I think he, did he trigger the VT Dispel? That's kind of troll. I'm just trying to void torrent to kill him, but anyways, I think that's as far as the mind controls go in this 2's game. I just thought that was a really good example for how it can be used effectively in 2's when the game is a little bit slower and you're not getting trained, you're going to be able to cast that quite a bit. Let's take a look at some other examples and how the spell can really benefit you in Arena. All right, here's another twos game, and I don't know why I lost the clip, but earlier I had been mind controlling the warrior and jumping him off, which allows me to run away and reset to get full HP. I'm drinking right now, so I'm healing up very efficiently. My man is regening too. And now we're gonna be looking to burst this warrior. We had already forced um, Pally Shrinket, Warrior Shrinket, so all we're looking to do is get CC on the Pally and then stun the warrior. Now, because I was able to mind control him and set him off the edge, we're able to kind of peel a bit or reset. But the next time I use mind control, it's gonna be a very similar situation. I'm gonna do it to negate the healing that the warrior receives from the Paladin. So we see we get the bubble here and watch what happens during this we get our psychic core back off cooldown so if i had an mc him here uh, there's a good chance he gets topped off and then we just lose on pressure because uh he has no block my disperse is kind of coming back up soon but you know you never know i could die so let's see what goes on from here i'd say the number one benefit in this matchup is just delaying uh, until your CC is ready so we can't CC the pal yet our DRs are coming off my CC is coming off cooldown and as soon as this paladin's bubble expires, we're going to be able to land more CC onto him. So I psychic horror him instantly off of the bubble because I see that it's ending. Unfortunately, we're not in voice and he sheeps at the same time. So it would have been pro if I stunned the warrior and then we would have just won instantly. Either way, the warrior has no reflect and he's super far from me uh, with the MC. You know, we're able to adjust his positioning as well. Get the mind games off, just getting kicked. But don't fear, another CC comes. Purge kick on the healer. Very nice play by Hansel. And then you, we end up winning the game, you know, just because you're able to MC and keep them low HP. You can extend the game, extend the CC, let your DRs come back up, and then, you know, take it from there. I think it's really good for slowing the game down to mind control. All right, those first two clips, pretty straightforward, just using mind control to delay the game and kind of slow things down, prevent healing. Now we're going to take a look at a good way to use it against Boomkins. So I've just mass dispelled my shaman from the hodge 
And what's going to happen now is he's going to get root beamed. And I knew he had root beam up. I was trying to pre mind control him before. But look, now that the shaman's beamed, this boomkin, if I mind control him, that beam is going to become ours. So that silence is going to be friendly, which means my shaman will then be able to dispel himself out of it. So I think he's aware of this. We're playing without voice, but I think he sees me trying to do it earlier. And as soon as I mind control the boomkin, the shaman's out of the beam. Look at that. He's just gone. Let me rewind that one second. So mind control the boomy, watch the shaman escape. As soon as he's mind controlled, the shaman knows he's not silenced anymore. Even though it looks like he is, it's a fake silence. And if any the enemies were in there, they would get silenced. So really good to be able to use that against boomkins. Especially having mass to spell and mind control. You can cast MD on the beam, and if they kick you, you can just kind of laugh in their face. Mind control them, the shaman dispels, and then they're just going to be utterly confused. I don't really think a lot of people know how that one works and because we do that you know they, they do their stormkeeper and bullshit i get cc'd but because my shaman's not cc'd and i was able to md him and allow him to dispel himself we're able to continue on with that game and not have to use any cooldowns during uh, their damage so good way to use that against boomkins for sure all right there's another example in 3v3 doing good outplay potential with mind control as we already said if we mind control the boomkin he his beam becomes ours in the same way if we mind control the boomkin or the dh while the shaman spirit links they're not going to get healed by it because they're going to be our friends and not his friends so in this situation i know that the shaman is going to press spirit link i have all my cc but he's just going to trinket link anyways i see the dh doesn't have trinket and i don't think they're anticipating what i'm about to do i literally called this out in voice i'm going to mc his link i'm going to mc his link and i mind control while the shaman is running in because that's what shamans do when they're about to link and the mind control goes off Spirit Link goes down, and because the DH is our friend right here, he's just going to die to dots at his low HP. This is actually last expansion, but um, haven't been able to pull that one off yet in Shadowlands, so we'll see if we can get that going. The Spirit Link doesn't heal him, and we end up winning. A uh, very similar situation in this next game. I'm going to fast forward a little bit. We're going to use Mind Control to adjust the windwalker's positioning i also do the mc boomy thing and he dispels there pretty cool so next time we're going to use my control in this game as we're going to use it to allow our stun drs to come off on the monk so right here we see we have our stuns coming up in however many seconds five seconds so i'm going to mind control him here and that's going to take him out of position i'm dragging him away from the pally so i brought this guy like sloop over here pally was running this way to heal him and I'm just going the opposite direction, so they're forever like ring around the rosy. And we'll keep watching to see what happens. I get cloned, doesn't matter, trinket it. The pally has to run the other way. We're able to get instant CC on the pally with our panda. And then fear off of that, monk can't karma, and he dies. So because I mind controlled this guy here, and it, it doesn't look like it's the biggest deal in the world, right? I think that he could have probably gotten a heal off like right here. If you look, the pally has wings up, which is an instant, like, full HP back in the day and probably still is now. He's in line of the monk, so I'm going to bring the monk LOS. Pally doesn't know what to do, starts running the other way. We get CC on him before he even gets a heal off, and our stuns are ready to go. So just using it to kind of delay the game, troll them, fuck up their positioning, make them push in, can be super, super effective. And even while they're training me, I'm able to get those off. So it's a lot easier when you have uh, tons and tons of haste, I will say, which is maybe why it was hard to, for me to do that in Shadowlands. All right, back to this expansion. This next example, we're not really going to use MC for any like crazy outplay mechanics or you know making their cooldowns not work. What we're going to do is use it as an interrupt to stop the mage. Now, when we're playing uh, with a resto shaman and a boomkin, our only real interrupt is beam, which is a one minute cooldown, and shear, which is a short cooldown. But if the shaman CC'd like he is right now, he can't use it. So what I'm going to look to do is try to MD this CC right here on the fear. If I can mass dispel the CC, there's a good chance that the shaman can either lion or ground the sheep from this evil mage Hansel over here. Unfortunately, he's on the other team this game and not on our team. I get kicked on holy very fast interrupt there. And I'm instantly going to start mind controlling the mage. And I think if we have similar haste, I kind of win this battle every time. So he gets interrupted on the disorient. And because I've already precasted the mind control on his second sheep, my cast is going to go off before his. He 100% gets the sheep if I don't mind control. So 
really good that I'm able to stop him here. I think they thought they were going to get the sheep there, so he stuns the Boomkin. But because the Shaman's Fear is ending, if he, the Mage tries to cast one more sheep, then all of a sudden he still has to deal with the Shaman's Shear, which is coming off cooldown. And then he's also going to be able to just pillar since they have no more CC DRs to actually set up on him. He's on DR for stun, he's on DR for DB, so they can't DB sheep, they can't stun sheep. He would have to fake grounding and shear and not get LOS with no blink. So good luck with that. Mage is toxic, that's why I play Shadow Priest. I might control him again on the ring just to make sure he gets away. And we're able to del delay their go. They use their stun DRs, they don't get the sheep. Yada, yada, yada. We go on to eventually... Uh, win the game uh, somehow. I don't know. We kill the Feral. We're just talking about my control anyway, so we don't care how this guy dies. And that's a great example of how to use it to interrupt. I would say against any like Mage Rogue or Mage Feral team, whenever the healer is your healer is bashed, you should always be super aware of when your healer is CC'd. If you ever see your healer stunned or a Rogue running to stun him, you could try to pre my control the Mage so he can't get the polymorphs. As long as you're far enough away from the rogue that he can't stop you or stun you, even if you get kicked on mind control, you can MD, or if you get kicked on MD, you can mind control. So it's just kind of like something that has no counterplay to it. If you're not uh, in range to be stunned or CC'd, you can you know, use both of those trees to your advantage. Right, one more example in threes here. We're gonna use mind control just for pure CC, nothing too fancy, we're not doing any crazy bullshit with it. We're just gonna only use mind control when we have no other CC. So I've already used my stun, I've already used my silence, I have fear, I have to dispel the sank, and it's actually funny because as I'm trying to dispel it, I accidentally dispel NS right as he pops it. Then I dispel the sank, which means I can full fear him. Since I have no other CC, all I gotta do is apply my damage. I put up two DPs on this rep paladin. I get bashed, but I know that these guys are so far away from me that there's no way they interrupt my mind control here. So I'm gonna instantly trink it, mind control the druid on his cast. He really did not see that one coming, and he gets full or half MC'd rather, put him away from the rep paladin out of line of sight, and then I think I cancel to shadow or death, and he dies. But maybe my death doesn't. Yeah, my death does kill him. So that's only really good to MC for CC when there's like when DPS is already low HP and you have no other instant form of CC because when you're mind controlling you're not really dealing damage but since I had already applied my double stack of DP on the rep paladin he is taking damage for me and then of course I have a boom kit on my team so he just kind of one shots him there this last uh, couple of examples here we're going to use mind control to peel for your team and whenever an enemy pops their damage cooldowns and there's limited interrupts you should look to try to mind control them to interrupt the burst on your teammates in this example i mind control the mage he pops combust and the meteor comes crashing down but again it's our meteor not his so it hits the rogue for 70k which back in bfa you know that's like 9 or 10k hp now it's a pretty big hit so we're able to negate his burst, swap a little bit onto the rogue there, and he gets pressured from it, and we end up killing him. Another really good thing to do in this expansion uh, against warriors is to mind control the warrior when he pops his Kyrian spear. It's going to be like that um, blue shit on the ground everywhere. It's really, really annoying if you're playing with a warlock and he puts the spear down. It'll keep sucking him back in it, but if you mind control the warrior, it would suck whoever is nearby on the enemy team in there. It also gives your Warlock an opportunity to port, which is super, super helpful if you're trying to peel for your team. I would also look to mind control enhanced shamans while they pop Bloodlust if they have no interrupts. It's really good to peel them. Again, it depends what kind of healer they have because they could get dispelled. Like this Disc Priest could have uh, dispelled the Mage's MC faster and I don't know, maybe they would have killed their healer, who knows. One last high IQ tip I recommend is to if you have a paladin on your team and you're playing against the paladin, you can mind control the enemy paladin, have your healer bop the enemy because he's your friend during the mind control, and then he can, he's on forbearance, can't bubble for 30 seconds, so you could try to one-shot him with all of your cooldowns, and they would probably be so confused if that happened, and I would really love to see someone do that. If anyone gets that off in arena, please send me that video because I think it'd be hilarious to do. I've done it before, but I haven't been queuing with a paladin, and we haven't tried it in a while, so I think we'll look to do that again. Maybe one last tip here. I used my control on the Warlock while the DH was about to darkness, so he would have just died to dots anyways, and the darkness wouldn't have prevented any damage. But I think that's going to be it for this video. I feel like we covered a lot of good stuff. We've had 1,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel, so thank you so much for those of you that are doing that and supporting and checking everything out. 
definitely check out the stream, twitch.tv, stop SP. We'll be streaming pretty frequently. Thanks for watching.